Thank you to everyone who sent me wonderful notes of condolences, and for those of you who shared some very personal stories of losing loved ones. It has all helped me greatly, and I so very appreciate you. You know, whether you've lost someone recently like I have, or it's been a long time, death is very difficult to deal with, and I hope in some small way that my videos might help heal and move on by using my travel experiences as a positive way to deal with loss. I'll try to visit places that my wife and I had planned to see and, well, hopefully add a few more interesting stops along the way. Thanks for being here. It means a lot to me. Today on Great Places Seen, I find myself alone in a remote forest with no hookups, wandering through a beautiful setting while keeping tabs on my trailer, resources, and bearing in mind what may lurk in the woods. Spread your wings and come along for the ride. My usual rainy departures have given way to much appreciated clear sunny weather. My personal troubles and grief are not in the rearview mirror, but rather a part of the experience of carrying on. There are always thoughts of my wife, what we would have shared on this journey, and now what I experience that helps honor her memory. And I'm off on the first big adventure of the year. A little later than I had expected uh, pulling out from uh, storage, but that's okay. Uh, I've got a beautiful sunny day for a change. <laughs> you know, most of my trips, as you've been watching, have been uh, out in the rain. So this is a, a welcome change. Uh, this leg of the trip is very short and, uh, well, I'll show you where we end up. I end up in traffic. It seems anywhere within an hour radius of DC, a slowdown is inevitable. Check-in was uh, three o'clock, it's four o'clock now. Uh, I've replaced, uh, I guess, bad weather with bad traffic. There's an accident up ahead and it's just uh, crawling along. So, taking my time. Um, it's pretty warm outside, it's almost uh, 90 degrees. Uh, but uh, doing fine here. Just waiting my turn to get by the accident. Well, I'm sorry it, somebody's having a bad day. That certainly is no fun, but I'd rather pass an accident than be in an accident. So it's still a good day. Apparently, there are several mishaps on both sides of the highway, a seemingly predictable prelude to the weekend. I, along with several other RVers on the road, are looking to reach a quieter, less stressful place. Twenty years ago, I would not have thought this route along I-68 would become so familiar to me almost a required gateway for any travel I'd take by car. First stop is a new stop for me, New Germany State Park. I have a Golden Age Pass, so I'm definitely going to take full advantage of it. I have a primitive site. The first task is to get some fresh water in the tank. While it fills, I have a beautiful view of New Germany Lake just across the street.
my sight seems all by itself. Well, it's not completely remote. The typical Maryland Park-style bathhouses nearby, very clean. Mostly because, well, there are not that many campers here. Plenty of trails await, but right now, while the temperatures at home are sweltering, I'm settling into the welcomed, quiet coolness of a summer mountain evening, and the impending sunset seen through filtered, flickering light in the trees. It's much darker here than the camera portrays. I have no hookups, just me and my trailer on our own for a couple of days. This is a great time for me to get some practical boondocking experience with this trailer. While it feels remote, I do have a few neighbors in sight through the trees, but they are much farther away than the majority of campgrounds I've stayed, and very quiet neighbors too. The Aldi system is heating water with propane. It's obviously working as night falls. The park ranger makes his final rounds, as I have the luxury of just sitting and enjoying the forest around me. Good morning. It's about 7 a.m. at camp. Outside, it feels like it's about 50 degrees. I haven't checked the thermometer. Um, other than the birds, very quiet. Uh, not many people up at all at this hour. I expected maybe a few more. Uh, the trailer worked absolutely great overnight. Battery power is still all the way up uh, to full. And I've been running the Aldi system. Uh, it's warm and comfortable inside. Uh, of course, the lights. I'm running my refrigerator off of propane, and uh, that has cooled down nicely. So, um, day one, everything working very well. Got plenty of water, took a hot shower before I went to bed. <laughs> Who can complain, right? So, on to the day. We've got a few trails to explore and a little bit of work to do on the trailer uh, before we head out to Ohio tomorrow. But that's tomorrow. We don't want to overlook today. And uh, today is at New Germany State Park, and I'm really excited to take a look around and see what's here. Well, I was just checking my uh, tank level. It was 62% when I started, and uh, now it looks like it's uh, down to 41%. So that gives me a sense of how much propane I'm using uh, to run the refrigerator, like 20%. I'm not sure the 63 was right to begin with. 
but that means that uh, at UCAMP I can uh, certainly fill up my propane tank. I'll take another reading tomorrow and uh, see exactly what my usage is. For this stop, I'm just leaving the car hitched. Uh, it'll just be a lot easier to roll in and out. I don't really need to drive around here. It doesn't appear to be a very large uh, park. So I'm going to walk today. And uh, that'll be a few miles, but it's a beautiful day. Mid-70s, nice breeze blowing. It's uh, very cool, not humid. Let's see what we find. I'd say about half to two-thirds of these campsites are open. Well, here's the no-mo zone uh, to address a serious decline in pollinator species. I think it's also a good excuse just not to cut the grass. It is a serious issue. And it's nice to see that the parks are, are addressing it. You may not have cell service here, but you certainly have a payphone. Look at that. Four minutes for a dollar. German immigrants settled here at the end of the 18th century. The Martin House is one of their remaining residences from the 1900s. Well, this park features several nice cabins. Uh, here's cabin number one. Nice new table. And it's got plenty of firewood on the porch. Comes with its own chopping block. Even has a nice little stream by it. Now recreational, the original immigrant families built an earthen dam to create the 13-acre New Germany Lake. It was the center of their small community, the source of power to run the first sawmill and grist mill in the area. Now there's a modern lake house community center and a nature center to showcase the wildlife of this area. This would be the only black bear sighting of this visit. Of course, many other animals roam these mountains. During the Great Depression almost a century ago, the Civilian Conservation Corps employed young out-of-work men to create parks and other related projects. The CCC did much of the work to create this park. The stonework and some structures, like one of the barracks that served as a mess hall and community center, remain today. Time to walk some trails. Right here at the lake is the Orchard Loop, a shaded plantation of spruce, pine, and fir, as well as an old apple orchard. The Loop Trail also passes remnants of old foundations of a house, barn, and several outbuildings. <laughs> I never did find them. There's a lot of downed pine in this forest. The trails so far uh, just look like they're cut through. This trail goes through a massive pine forest. 
soaring trees here. And it was many of these pine trees that were felled that made up the structures that they built here. The Civilian Conservation Corps, contractors. They built the log cabins from these trees and also all the uh, barracks and mess hall and other structures that they used while the Civilian Conservation Corps was here. Oh, what a beautiful day it is out here. You know, if you get a, uh, something that is uh, very strongly pine scented, uh, you would almost have smell-o-vision <laughs> because that's what it smells like out here. Absolutely full of fresh pine scent on a nice cool day. Well, this is where I am on the Orchard Loop. And I've chosen the Orchard Loop uh, for the first hike because it goes along the lake. So I might get some lake views. Let's find out. I mean, the sign after all does say lake. And the old sign on the ground too. Mature forests like here have few ground plants because the tree canopy shades much of the sunlight, except along the side of the trail that does have direct sun. There are pine tree roots across the trail in several areas, so you just kind of have to watch out. It's not exactly smooth sailing through the whole trail, but most of it's good. Here's where the loop uh, goes up and away from the lake, so I guess there weren't any real lake views along the loop. And we're also at the edge of the park. Easy to tell with the no trespassing signs. And here's the sign at the top of the hill. Well, I don't think it's meant for hikers, more for cross-country skiers and the like in the winter. It has a pretty good little slope down there. is what happens when a tree crosses the path. This one was uprooted. At times it felt like I was hearing the highway from camp, but uh, it appears that New Germany Road is quite a busy road at all hours of the day and night. But while I could hear the road, for the most part, it's really quiet here. Here are some young pine trees, hoping to someday reach the heights of their parents. A somewhat unremarkable trail, although it is a very nice walk. But I can imagine in the winter when you're coming through here, seeing all of these tall green pine trees 
That must be quite a sight, especially if you're going across snow. Watch out for these roots. And while you'll see a, a small conservation area of no mow, <laughs> you can see huge swaths in the middle of the forest that have been cleared and mowed. Well, I think I've reached the end of this trail. This is an absolutely gorgeous summer Saturday. Huge parking lot here. And you can see there's still room available The porch of the CCC Barracks is a great place to check out the trail map. The Gazebo Loop has a 1930s CCC built gazebo with an overlook. Well, that seems like a pretty good one to try. And as advertised, here is the gazebo. Looks very sound for a 90-year-old wood structure. While you can tell you're on the side of a steep hill or small cliff, the summer leaves are full, so there's no real view right now other than the surrounding trees. I miss my mom too. It does overlook a lot of trees. I can imagine in the fall or winter you get quite a nice view here. It at least has a nice breeze through here and you know it's a pleasant place to sit if you need a little time to relax. And the gazebo loop continues. This forest has moss everywhere. It's a nice accent to the ground and trees, especially with moving filtered sunlight on it. You can tell it's been a little while since that log was cut. The blaze for this trail is dark gray, almost blends in with the tree bark. This one is a little bit more noticeable. Once you get past the gazebo, you can tell people usually don't go much further. This trail doesn't appear to be used that heavily. You'll find official and unofficial tree markings all through this forest. The gazebo loop isn't very long and I'm heading now down to the Turnpike Trail. This was a long out and back trail um, that goes along the stream down here. So let's check it out. It's a very narrow trail through here.
Well, I think with the dog barking, it's safe to say there aren't any bears around here. Or maybe he's barking at a bear. Maybe he just got caught by a bear. This looks like my juncture with the Turnpike Trail, which by its name would seem to indicate it's a pretty wide, easy traveled trail. Here is some park infrastructure. And apparently I'm still on the gazebo loop. I'm just down toward the bottom of it. I guess that's the indicator. We'll go this way. This trail is out and back, so I'll be coming back this way when I return to the trailer. Yeah, compared to the other trails, this really is a turnpike. Look how wide this thing is. And just going off trail for a minute, I'll show you the uh, creek that this trail runs along. Well, this looks very nice. I've seen a lot of pollinators in this forest. Clear views through the forest, through the water, clear cool air. It's a very pleasant walk. I'm amazed this park has so few people in it. I've only passed three other hikers all day. It's certainly a beautiful place to have all to yourself. And we've reached the junction with the Dynamite Shack Trail. Some tree stumps have huge lichen growing on them. Lichen absorb nutrients from the air and can be used as air quality indicators. Well, I'd say the air is pretty good here. More trees, more signs, more tags. Many trees have multiple tags. A few even have useful signs for the average visitor. And here is the old dynamite shack, which looks like it's been hit by dynamite. This is way up the side of the hill. That was quite a hike up. And it continues upward from here. The sign that was here is long gone. They 
I built the shack out of wood and covered it with sheet metal. In case you don't know where the door is, well, there's an arrow. The dynamite shack itself isn't an especially important location, except of course when it was in use. Still, it's an interesting stop. In its current decaying form, some of the dynamite shack's shapes against the shades of forest lighting display an almost artistic quality of color, contrast, and texture as nature slowly reclaims this simple utilitarian shed. The Civilian Conservation Corps used a lot of dynamite, because back in the day, that's how you cleared rocks and earth. Back in the day, that may have said, dynamite. This was in use almost 90 years ago. And in another 90 years, well, there may not be much of a trace of it left. Time to head back down the hill, along the turnpike, and to the trailer. It's late afternoon now, probably a good time for lunch. At least the return trip is all downhill. This trail is so steep. It once had a narrow gauge railroad to haul timber in the 1800s and perhaps helped transport the dynamite later in the 1930s. Now it's scenic forest views tucked away in the western Maryland mountains. The return trip always seems much faster. My guess is that's a CCC built bench. Before I know it, I'm off the trail and back at the lake. This is the obvious draw for visitors of New Germany State Park. And why not? It's a relaxing, pristine setting. That's cabin 11, another of the original CCC structures.
At the trailer, afternoon forest light is also very nice, as is the breeze blowing through the windows. The Tab 400 is a comfortable little trailer. It has all the amenities. Just sitting in the woods on its own makes for a very enjoyable afternoon. Listening to some music. The rear stargazer window is phenomenal. My wife was having problems eating in the end and she was trying all sorts of different foods. This was one of the uh, items that were left in the pantry. Not something that I would normally order, but uh, it's there. Actually, it looks pretty good. So that's my lunch today. Well, apparently this isn't just your run-of-the-mill tuna. It's globally sourced fish. Pole and line vessels only. Processed in Spain. It's an international cuisine. good. I think because it's a little bit spicy, she might have had problems with it. Having pancreatic cancer, she was having problems eating uh, in the last couple of months. And um, yeah, this is a little bit <laughs> spicy. You probably didn't agree. But what for essentially is an MRE, it's really good. After that long afternoon hike, uh, maybe a short nap is in order. Yeah, it looks like a good place to rest. With evening, the day-use park-goers have all left. The lake and roads are virtually deserted. It's a great time to admire the park on its own. If you have pets, there's a camping loop just for you, and far enough away from the others to keep everyone happy. I am struck by the large number of picnic tables and grills. Perhaps there are times of the year when this park fills up, but for this gorgeous midsummer weekend, very few people were here. There's your best kept secret tip if you're seeking a quiet stop along the way. Good morning. It's quite dark this morning compared to yesterday. Looks like a little weather has moved in. Light rain is falling. Wind is rustling through the trees. It's quite a different day than it was yesterday. I have no cell service here, so I have no idea what the weather is. But clearly, it's going to be a cloudy and perhaps a damp ride today. 
I feel for those campers out there with tents who have to pack up everything in the rain, the wet and the damp. I'm very fortunate that uh, today the car is still hitched. I never unhitched here and uh, all I have to do basically is pull out. So at least my departure is going to be relatively easy today. Well, this is when I really have to consider myself uh, fortunate. I can get a warm shower, enjoy a nice hot breakfast, trailer's warm, everything's dry. I'm all hitched up, and uh, in a little while, I'm just gonna roll out. Breakfast is always very simple for me. Uh, usually I just have some oatmeal, uh, some juice or coffee, and my vitamins, and that's about it. Well, my propane is at 30%. I started out at 63, and it's very clear that uh, using the Aldi system uses up uh, a lot of propane. Uh, so turning it on, turning it off, that, that really helps a lot. And uh, of course, I don't need to keep the hot water on all the time. I have a three-way refrigerator in here, and uh, this has been using propane, and uh, quite efficiently. So I'm very happy with uh, how the refrigerator has uh, performed. It's very cold, uses hardly any propane, and uh, that's a winner. I also like my uh, trailer on Bluetooth. I just uh, have a lot of music on my phone, and I can play it uh, through the Bluetooth. I really don't listen to the radio or anything like that here. Um, you know, unless I, I need to for some sort of information, but I've got a, a portable radio that I use mostly. So Bluetooth, yeah, it's great. This trailer uh, is probably on the small side for most people, but uh, for two people, there's plenty of room in here. Uh, my wife and I were able to um, do just fine in here. Of course, you know, we've been together for almost 25 years, so we knew how to uh, get it browned and buy each other. Uh, it's a little strange just having it all to myself. I'm not uh, concerned about what music I'm playing or if I'm trying to uh, get a shower, use the bathroom, or, or it's her turn, or, you know, yeah. I mean, sure, it's, it, it's great. I'm, I'm just uh, enjoying it my way, but uh, I, I don't have her with me, and that uh, is certainly... Uh, a huge price to pay for this but it's life that happens life that kind of dictates where we're going and uh, you know I accept it and uh, I will make the most of what I have now I have no real schedule. I'll get on the road when I'm ready. I can enjoy doing some light work while the few campground neighbors do their work to pack up and leave. The morning rain has ended, the weather seems to be clearing, and I'm making a nice easy departure for a few hours on the road to Ohio. I'll definitely return here at some point. I learned some things about my trailer during this visit. How my onboard systems use batteries and propane. How I can better use those to stretch my stays while fully enjoying my amenities. When I bought the trailer, I felt it would be good for off-grid camping. And for this weekend, it was. 
I'm looking forward to more short stays like this before heading out on some of the grander adventures I hope to have. Right now, back to the highway and on to the annual U Camp Rally. I hope you'll join me for that soon. Thanks for watching and follow GPS to the next destination.